is Busy Lady of the Craft Divas. And I just bought a Epson Ecotank 4760 to get off into sublimation. Um, I've been hesitant for the past couple years. I've been researching but hesitant to get into sublimation because of the dedicated equipment involved, the cost involved with all of the different equipment you have to buy, uh, separate ink, uh, making sure I had a, a heat press that would um, get to the appropriate temperature to be able to um, work with my sublimation pieces, and then also being limited to light materials and being limited to polyester and substrates that are appropriately prepared in order to be sublimated. Um, since this quarantine happened, I've had a lot of more time to research um, and look at the sublimation process and I decided to take the plunge. So therefore, I ordered a um, eco tank. I knew I wanted an eco tank because I did not want to have to fool with the cartridges and so forth. I do have a Epson uh, 7710 for large or wide format printing. However, I have the regular ink in there and I use that for my printable um, HTV and my other printable items. So I knew I wanted an eco tank. I would have preferred to get a large format printer. However, um, seeing as I'm just getting into sublimation, um, I didn't want to go that far. So I got the eco tank. I also got um, Printer's Jack ink off of Amazon. I know a lot of people are partial to the Cosmos. Um, I did some additional research. Um, there are many people out there who have um, sublimation ink. So um, I decided to try the Pinner's Jack ink. It's um, anti-UV sublimation ink. And I got it off of Amazon. Um, the printer came from Office Depot. And you are now going to enjoy the unboxing with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take um, and remove the ink from the Epson cartridges, put the printer's jack ink into the Epson cartridges, and um, use that. Um, the printer's jack ink did come with um, syringes. However, I really don't want to be too bothered with that. Um, I did a number of... Uh, quite a bit of research and a number of people have just taken the ink out of here put it um, and because The eco tank is actually made for these bottles and the tops on these bottles to put the ink in there So it just makes it a lot easier It's not a big printer at all not heavy it's just awkward based upon where I have it sitting. One moment. is not a large printer because I live in an apartment and I am running out of space. So as you can see, the black bottle, because we print so much black, is larger than the other bottles. But again, I have the black, the cyan, the magenta, and the yellow instruction book there and of course power cord so i am going to
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up. I'll open up a smaller one so you don't have to. I'm going to open up one of the Epson printer inks. Excuse me. And I am going to Alright, has the top on there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually see if I can get the top off of this. Okay, it's not going to come off with that. I don't want ink all over me. I'm going to go over the sink and I'm going to open this up and then I'm going to pour it out and pour it into I'm going to take the cyan, I'm going to open this that came with the Epson, take it out, pour in the printer stack cyan in here, and then put it into the uh, printer. But I don't want to do this here. I want to do this over the sink. I'll probably put my gloves on, and then I'll come back. Okay, what I am doing now is I am... Taking the ink that came with the ink roll tank out of the original bottles and refilling it with the printer's jack ink that I got. So what I'm doing here is Taking off the top, taking this top off of here. Hopefully, you can see what I'm doing. I am going to, I don't know what I'm going to do with this ink. I don't even know why I'm saving it because I don't believe I'd use it. Maybe find some craft thing to mix up ink together. But I am going to rinse this out. Now, one thing I would suggest, just to be on the safe side, is to, um, when you rinse these out, let them sit so that all the water on the inside is dry. And it wasn't hard to rinse that bottle out. As you can see, it's fairly clean. And now I'm rinsing the top out. I rinse it until there's no more yellow coming through. When I um, do this, if I see, still see color, I um, continue to rinse until I don't see any other color coming through. So pretty simple, not too difficult. Um, I'm going to do the rest of these bottles and let them sit. Then I'll come back and show you how I feel. We are now ready to take our Jack's ink and put it into the rinsed out Epson Eco Tank e bottle. So. As you can see, um, the Jax ink does have a protective top on it. I'm just taking a plastic fork and opening it up. I'm now taking the Echo Eco Tank, excuse me, Eco Tank and bottle and filling it with the Jax ink. I'm not gonna fill it all the way up. As you can see, there's still a little bit of the Jax ink left over. So I am um, going to set that to the side. Screw this top back on. And I am going to 
do the rest of my bottles. I'm going to take this Jack Ink. Of course, we're not getting rid of it. We're going to save it. And just for my own clumsy protection, I'm going to put it in here and set it off to the side. And I'm going to finish the rest of these. And once I finish the rest of these, we'll be ready to actually put the ink in our printer. So I went and I did take all of the Jack's ink, take all of the Epson ink out of the original bottles. And then I went and put the Jack's ink in here. And now I'm going to put it in the printer. Just as a side note, because um, I had some ink left over, Jack's ink left over, um, from each bottle of the colors however because the Epson bottle was larger I did use all the Jack's ink in here so we're gonna take the top off and for this printer um, once I took the tape off this just lift up I lifted this up now the way that this um, is made even though they give you the syringes I'm not really sure how they would work um i'm going to just you know use the bottle from here but i did read the instructions and according to the instructions there's a quick reference card right here on the front where it says to unpack it take all the tape off then um put your ink in and then turn it on what i'm going to do is um now i'm at the put the ink in stage and Epson said, don't squeeze, don't push. When you set it on top of there, now you should start to see the ink come in. It said on the directions, if you didn't see the ink come in, just lift it up again and start all over. But I mean, it's like really no pressure and it's going in there. It's kind of slow, but the ink is going in there. I'm not sure what the full fill line is. I guess we'll figure that out. Okay, it said it would automatically stop once it was filled. So I believe that's the fill line. So I'm going to take this off. Wow. Well, actually, that wasn't the fill line. That's the whole Jack's bottle. Because <laughs> there's nothing left in here. So the Jack's that I purchased, and I will put a link in um, the description of what I've used and where I got it from. But again, um, it fills it up to the line. I'm quite sure, I'm thinking maybe it might fill it up more, but we'll see. So I'm gonna put that down and next I'm gonna do the cyan and I'll do the other ones and then come back. So this is going through initialization. Um, the screen asked me to confirm, I pressed the screen for smart initialization it asked me to confirm that the ink ticks were in there and that they were full. I said yes, and then I had to hold down the question mark button for more than three seconds. And now it's going through further initialization. Um, it's telling me do not turn the power off until this is done. Again, this takes about 10 minutes, so I'll be back. So the printer right now is going through an alignment process where it's printing out various images and asking you to print the best image. So this is still part of the initialization process. So the printer went through a number of alignment sequences and did a number of printouts. And on the screen there, you just had to select the number next to the um, image that was best aligned or best shown um, once it went through that it did want to set up the facts i'm not going to be using this for facts of course and eventually we were all done um, you can always go through the maintenance settings to make additional changes the next step in my process is to take this printer 
and connect it up to my PC.